using deductive reasoning to verify conjectures, lesson 2.3a. We have three previous videos, and you know you can click in the description to go back and watch them if you get lost. We've learned that one counterexample is enough to disprove a conjecture, but to prove that a conjecture is true, we must use deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning uses logic to draw conclusions from given facts, definitions, and properties. So we learned about inductive reasoning before. Now we can compare them. Inductive reasoning is based on patterns. It's got limited observation. There's a high probability of it being true, but there's some risk of error. Deductive reasoning is based on logic. We use a step-by-step -step process. It uses scientific method or properties, theorems, axioms, and definitions. It uses facts. So is this inductive or deductive reasoning? There's a myth that you can balance an egg on its end only on the spring equinox. That's around March 20th for the northern hemisphere. It would be called the autumnal equinox for the southern hemisphere. And I'll have a link for a Wikipedia article about that in the description if you want to see it. A person was able to balance an egg on its end on July 8th, September 21st, and again on December 19th. Well, if you're only supposed to do it around March 20th, our conclusion is this myth is false. So is that inductive or deductive reasoning? If we look at our list of comparisons down here, is it inductive or deductive? Did we use a scientific method and properties, theorems, axioms, or facts? Or was it based on limited observation and patterns? If you said inductive, you're right, because it's based on a pattern of observation. So we got inductive for this one. Okay, let's try another one. The triangle sum theorem states that a, the sum of the angle measures of a triangle is 180 degrees. Two angles of a triangle measure 40 degrees and 80 degrees. Our conclusion is the third angle is 60 degrees. 40 and 80 makes 120. We need 60 more to make the 180. So is this inductive or deductive? If you said deductive, you're right, because we're using the triangle sum theorem. We're using a theorem, a property. So it's deductive, okay? In deductive reasoning, if the given facts are true and we apply the correct logic, then the conclusion must be true. And the law of detachment is one valid form of deductive reasoning. So I'm going to take a quick break for some etymology, which is another way of saying study of words, vocabulary. We're going to be using the words invalid, valid, and premise. I don't want you to confuse the word invalid with invalid. Invalid means you're injured or disabled. Invalid has the accent on the val syllable. It's an adjective meaning without value or worthless. Valid is an adjective meaning supported by facts or authority. And a premise, that's a noun meaning a statement assumed to be true and used to draw a conclusion. Okay? I've got my little yellow finger pointing. That means you should probably write those down if you need to. Okay? So here's the law of detachment. If P implies Q is a true statement and P is true, well, then Q is true. We can verify conjectures by using the law of detachment. So here's our given. If two segments are congruent, then they have the same length. Segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Those two segments are congruent. Our conjecture would be that AB is equal to CD. That's like our conclusion, isn't it? So the hypothesis is if two segments are congruent, the conclusion is, then they have the same length. Segment AB is congruent to segment CD matches the hypothesis of a true conditional. It says if two segments are congruent. By the law of detachment, AB is equal to CD. The conjecture is valid. It's supported by facts or authority. Okay? We have another given. If you're tardy three times, you must go to detention. And Bob is in detention. So the conjecture is Bob was tardy at least three times. He's in detention, right? We determine which is the hypothesis and which is the conclusion. The hypothesis is if you are tardy three times, 
The conclusion is you must go to detention. The given statement, Bob is in detention, matches the conclusion of a true to conditional. If he's in detention, it says you must go to detention, right? But this doesn't mean the hypothesis is true. Bob could be in detention for another reason. It's true that you could go to detention if you're tardy three times, but just because he's sitting in the detention room doesn't mean that's what he did wrong. He could have done a lot of other things wrong. And the conjecture is not valid. It's invalid. And that's going to bring us to the law of syllogism. If P implies Q and Q implies R are true statements, then P implies R is a true statement. This is another valid form of deductive reasoning. It lets us draw conclusions from two conditional statements when the conclusion of one statement is the hypothesis of the other statement. Now, if that sounds confusing, stick with me and you'll understand, okay? So here's something else that should probably be written down. We have a major premise and a minor premise. Major premise is a general statement about a whole group. A minor premise is a specific statement about something that indicates membership in the group. And if we accept both the major and minor premise as true, then we must accept the conclusion as true. So here we have a major premise and a minor premise, and they're both conditional statements. The major premise is all birds have feathers. Our other conditional statement, our minor premise says sparrows are birds. And we've shown that sparrows are members of the group birds. Now we arrive at a conclusion based on the major and minor premise. The conclusion is that sparrows have feathers. If all birds have feathers and sparrows are birds, then sparrows have feathers. This series of statements is called a syllogism, and we get to our conclusion based on the statements that are accepted as true. But this isn't always the case. We can still draw invalid conclusions even if our premise is true. So here we have a major premise you must be 16 to get a driver's license in Illinois. Our minor premise is Dave is over 16 years old. So our conclusion is that Dave has a driver's license. Does that sound valid to you? Well, just because you have to be 16 to get a license, it doesn't mean that everyone in Illinois over 16 has one. What if we swapped the minor premise and the conclusion? Would it be valid? So let's swap the minor premise and the conclusion. So you must be 16 to get a driver's license in Illinois. Dave has a driver's license, so our conclusion is that Dave is over 16 years old. Yeah, that is valid. When we swapped the minor premise and the conclusion, it became valid. But the original way is not valid. Okay? We can verify conjectures by using the law of syllogism and determine if they're valid. So here's our given. If the measure of angle A is less than 90 degrees, then angle A is acute. If angle A is acute, then it's not a right angle. Our conjecture is, if the measure of angle A is less than 90 degrees, then it's not a right angle. It's the law of syllogism. If P implies Q and Q implies R are true statements, then P implies R is a true statement. So. Our P is the measure of an angle is less than 90 degrees. Our Q is the angle is acute, and the R is the angle is not a right angle. What's happening is we're saying this is the hypothesis, this is the conclusion, and in the next one, this is the hypothesis, and this is the conclusion. See? So Q is getting used twice. Once is a conclusion and once is a hypothesis. And we're given that P implies Q and Q implies R, because Q is the conclusion of the first conditional statement. This is the conclusion of this conditional statement. And it's the hypothesis of the second conditional statement. So we can conclude that P implies R. The measure of an angle is less than 90 degrees. The angle is not a right angle. So the conjecture is valid by the law of syllogism. Now, if you're still confused, this might help a little bit. The law of syllogism is similar to the transitive property of equality we use in algebra. And they both involve the same term in the middle. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. See? Here's another given. 
If a number is divisible by 4, then it is divisible by 2. If a number is even, then it's divisible by 2. So our conjecture is if a number is divisible by 4, then it's even. So our P is a number is divisible by 4. Our Q is a number divisible by 2. And our R is a, num a number is even. But we end up with another Q down here. A number is divisible by 2. It should have been P, Q, R, but we have P, Q, R, Q. We're given that P implies Q and R implies Q. And the law of syllogism can't be used to draw a conclusion because Q is the conclusion of both conditionals. Even though the conjecture P implies Q is true, the logic that was used to make the conclusion isn't valid, it's invalid. We can draw a conclusion by using the law of deductive reasoning so we have a given, if two angles make a linear pair, then they are adjacent. If two angles are adjacent, then they share a side. Angle 1 and angle 2 make a linear pair. Our conclusion is angle 1 and angle 2 share a side. This is valid. It went from P to Q to R. Now, our next lesson is using deductive reasoning to solve logic puzzles. So it's going to help you understand deductive reasoning some more, and that's going to be 2.3b. Sorry about that, 2.3b, all right? So hopefully you wrote down all these definitions and all my yellow hand pointer boxes. The comparisons here, the law of detachment, the law of syllogism, what these words mean, major and minor premise, okay? So those are all important. Put them into your spiral. And I'll see you next time. Bye.